Welcome to my creepy, sexy bird lady mixed media tutorial for the day. My name is Karen Campbell and I will be your host. I am the owner of awesomeartschool.com and I am also a mother doing everything in her power to avoid doing laundry and dishes. Um, I'm also the author of the How to Draw Fun Fab Faces series available on Amazon as well as the co-author of the book for the colorful teacher, um, for the favorite teacher in your life. Today I am showing you this insanely weird looking, slightly creepy uh, journal page that I worked on all morning. We're having a snow day. My kids have been out of school for three weeks. I'm going a little bit mad, I'm not going to lie. And so today I entertained myself in the studio by making this super cool chick. She is based on uh, this piece of artwork I found on Pinterest by this artist Slava Thok, who is um, amazing oil painter from Russia. Um, you can find some of his paintings in my whimsical portrait board on Pinterest. If you look up Karen Campbell artist, you will find me there. Um, yeah, I just love that. Today I wanted to mess around with a supply I haven't used in a long time, which is the liquid pencil by uh, Derivan. And um, I thought I was gonna use the blue shade because it kind of went with this tissue paper, um, but I actually ended up using the gray. <clears throat> it comes in very many shades. I don't know, maybe four or five shades. Um, and for every color that it comes in, it comes with a rewettable one or water soluble and one that is permanent. I always use the permanent because I want it to stay put after I've put it down. So this tissue paper I bought at Target, I don't know, a few years ago, and I've used it for a bunch of my journal spreads because it's really hardy and thick and doesn't rip on you when you are putting it into your journals. So um, I've just torn up large swaths of it and uh, at first I wasn't going to cover the whole entire thing, but I ended up doing 93% of it. <laughs> I don't know why I left these like teeny peekaboo areas. Like I basically my, that's my, me and my laziness coming through, but I'm using matte medium to put it on. There's my kitty's tail. And, um, and you just want to make sure that when you're gluing things with matte medium, you make sure you're the under surface is wet. And then all of a sudden, and also you also paint on top of it with the matte medium as well. And that gives you good coverage. And I made sure to um, smooth out all the wrinkles and air bubbles with my fingers and just make sure those are all plastered down really well. And then I just air dried it with my, my hair dryer. So I guess that would not be air drying, but I dried it with my hair dryer. Um, and you're supposed to wait for 24 hours. I like to wait mm, four minutes and then I gotta get going because you know, time's a wasting. Um, so this is actually, I mean, I'm using that picture as a reference. I think it's stunning. I think my creepy version is really is a creepy version. Um, but again, I love to use, um, reference photos just in, for head till is really my favorite and um and then i like to just kind of take it and go off on my own on it and use my own color scheme and i just like to use it for for different faces i got i got bored of doing my own faces for so so long um and sometimes i don't want to think that hard and so i just like to and it also helps me shore up my observation skills and helps me practice drawing what i see which i'm always trying to improve and so it does help me kind of do all of those things in one. So I'm actually using my white Stabilo. Um, I use my Stabilos all the time for those who know me. Usually it's my black, but today it was my white because um, it writes over everything. And sometimes if you're trying to use like a color pencil, it just doesn't stick to whatever you have underneath it. But the Stabilos work on everything. So if you saw me there, I'm, I squirted out some of that liquid pencil in gray, nine, permanent as well as clear gesso, which I labeled clear because on my plate it looks identical to the white gesso. Um, and I'm putting down clear gesso, I mean, I'm sorry, white gesso because I really just want to cover up the tissue paper that's showing. And I am mixing it in with um, some of the, you can see there, the liquid pencil to just get some shading going. This for the first coat of this is rough. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it, you got to put it on pretty thick to cover up the layers of of all that design underneath it. 
So I'm really just going very heavy handed and just kind of slapping it on just to get something down on my paper. Do you know what I mean? Um, because it's not opaque 100%. It's sort of like 83% opaque. So you got to kind of like go for it. Um, and so I'm just using like an old yucky brush. Every time I use gesso, you do not want to use your nicest brushes because it, they will get destroyed. So I have brushes that are dedicated to gesso and that is what I am. Um, I always go to. So I have to put back in some of my features. Wow, that was another cat. <laughs> I think my son had come and like shoved my new kitten Rosie right in the right in the camera. That's so nice. Um, so yeah, I'm going back on my black stabilo because what it, what I want to have happen is when I go back in with my graphite and my gessos is I want to use the stabilo to help me shade. So I usually will touch those areas on purpose and then they help uh, create the shading. It also helps redefine, you know, everything that I'm drawing. So if you can see, I just redrew her face uh, with those black lines and then I can like, oh, there's her nose and there's her mouth. I also love using other artists work as references. Again, I would never do this if this was like a commission piece or someone was buying this. I would never use a reference this heavily, but this is just for me. This is just for fun and just show you some like art supplies that I just like to use once in a while. So just for fun. So <clears throat> I have no intention of ripping this off or selling this or anything. Just, just for me, just for fun. Um, again, I like to use them for, you know, head tilt or expressions or like this, the nose on this is like paper thin and super long and I, I just wouldn't think to make a nose like that. So that's for me where look using references is super fun and helpful because it's like, oh yeah, what if I made a really long skinny nose, you know, mm, here, let's go make one. And so I like to try my hand at different things and then, you know, when I am off on my own and I am doing art when I'm not using reference, I, you know, the back of my head, I'm like pulling all of these experiences together and then it makes my own characters that I come up with that more unique and special. So it's all learning, learning, learning all the time. And then hopefully I can pass on some of my things that I'm learning on to you as well. So. So if anytime you see that gray is when I've just gone ahead and put a little bit of that liquid graphite or pencil on to my paintbrush, but I always keep some of the gesso on there too. If I want the gray to be more gray and less white, then I will mix it with the clear gesso. If it's too dark and I want to lighten it up again, then I simply go back without washing my brush. I don't think I wash my brush the entire time. I will simply go back and put it into the white gesso and then blend it in. This does not work well wet on wet. I re really need to make sure you're dry brushing the whole time. So you're using a teeny tiny bit of gesso and or a teeny tiny bit of the liquid pencil every time you go to uh, paint onto your page. It's a very delicate kind of push full. You have to do a lot of layers. Um, there's a lot of back and forth between white, as you can see there, white, white, white. And then again, I can pull in some of the Stabilo that will be activated as well. I'm adding more Stabilo there. So I want more shadow and then see when I touch it with my brush that has a little bit of clear gesso on it or if it's wet from any of the substances that I'm using, it will pull that along and add some more shading. So that's kind of my favorite way to, to shade. So this sort of is, is, yeah, it has some hard edges in there. So I'm adding some more white. Now this brush was wet and if you can see what it's doing, it's yucky and it's, <laughs> it's you can see all my brush strokes and this I tried to I was kind of hoping it would dry out as I was using it. it was just no good so I kind of ditched that in my water and I grab another brush as you can see right there because I really it's really needs to be dry when you are using these if you don't um, it ends up just doing like weird things so I take a lot of time so there's a lot of breaks in this this um, piece of artwork that you don't see where I'm just drying it I just take a minute and dry my page it's, you'll be much more successful if you want to try this medium, um, making sure that you do not have excess wetness on your brush. You make your sure very, very dry. And then as you can see, I take that brush plainly with a tiny dab of the liquid pencil and you can blend it in finally making sense of all those layers and they're starting to come together. But yeah, this is not easy. This is not my favorite medium. I just haven't used it in quite a long time. 
Um, I have a, I, I'll link you to, I have another um, live tutorial that I um, have on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description box for you because it's, um, it's, it's real time. Um, and it will, it's a project, um, it's, not, it's not super different, it's not super similar, but um, it just goes through the layers one by one. But you can see how many layers, I've probably done about four, uh, four like distinct layers and then of course drying them in between um, again I reach my gelatos when I'm kind of had it with my painting um, the gelatos especially the white on top of that gesso is looks like it was meant to be the hard part about using the gelato on such a wrinkled page is that it's such a wrinkled page so it, it takes a bit to work around all the, there's all those little mini crevices from all those wrinkles and everything so it doesn't go on as smoothly as if this had just been straight up painted and I hadn't collaged the whole part underneath but that's all right I mean texture is what makes you know these pages so interesting at least I think so so I'm going back with my Stabilo and I am um, adding some eyeballs. I kind of love her eye, <laughs> like Lur liked her eyes like that. I was very tempted to leave them super crazy um, and not paint them in. I, they were kind of reminded me of, I don't know, zombie eyes or cat eyes or something. So I was very close, but I didn't want to creep anyone out too, too much. Um, so I decided it would be boring and paint them in. Um, and the same thing with her lips. So anytime you want to go ahead and paint over, you know, something pattern or collage, it's a good idea to just, um, just gesso at first. It just makes your paint kind of glide on a little bit more smoothly and evenly. You don't have to, but you certainly can. Um, again, just going over, highlighting some of her features with the Stabilo there. I love how her back looks and I am using the, I do love to use paper and collage as um, as the main feature, like to become her hair or to become her clothes. So when I saw that image uh, by that artist, I just immediately thought of using the collage for hair instead of, you know, instead of uh, just as always as background. So I do do this um, from time to time and I always, get endless satisfaction out of these projects where, where I do that um, and yeah it's just a lot of fun so then you're painting in the negative space all around her and I just have this this um, I think it was called yellow brilliant green of uh, by basics which is like a transparent paint which again it's funny lately I've been using those more and more which normally is, is a sign of a very poor quality paint but sometimes you I, I want that background to show through um, and so having a poor quality transparent paint is actually quite advantageous. Um, and here is a perfect example of where that works. Uh, so I wanted to draw a bird, um, but I didn't really want to draw a bird. So I have, I forgot I had this pencil, this stencil, sorry. So I pop a, pop a bird on there by just tracing in the lines with my Stabilo. And then I'm just grabbing uh, some turquoise color paint that matches the turquoise that's in the tissue paper there. Look at her crazy eyeballs staring at us. Yikes! And then I go ahead and I'm going to use that for her eyes. I don't know what made me have make made her have two color eyes. I've seen that a little bit lately on a couple projects. Trish Rosema. Yes, I'm speaking to your girlfriend. Art Journal Junkie, she had done this recently, and I remember once somebody commented like, why did you do that? And she was just like, I don't know. <laughs> and I totally relate to that. So today, Trish, this is for you, girlfriend. Thanks for the inspiration. Um, so if anyone asks me why I do that, I'm gonna say, I don't know, <laughs> just did. She's wonky and weird and creepy, and this just adds to her wonky, weird, and creepiness. And so there, why not? I'm using that liquid pencil to make her lips uh, dark. I was kind of debating, like, should I add red? Should I? This is very analogous color scheme, right? Analogous color scheme means you have um, colors next to each other on the color wheel. So you have green and blue. Very straightforward. Um, you, to, if, to make her pop, I could have had like red lips, which is the opposite of the green on the color wheel and maybe a red bird. But I just... Uh, I just decided not to do that and just keep keep it as is today 
Um, of course, my favorite step in the whole wide world, my Mod Podge. Um, I really wanted to make her have sort of dramatic, dramatic lashes. And instead of pouring the Mod Podge and spreading it like I normally do, I'm using it a little bit more conservatively today. I'm using a smaller brush and I'm starting at her, her eyelashes, the places on her face where I want to be delicate and um, you know, smear with intent. <laughs> smear with smooth intention so she doesn't get completely screwed up. Um, and then of course I dry her and she did dry very quickly today. And then I'm using my pit pens. I love this gray. The gray on the gray is just kind of delicious if you ask me. Um, and you use, I always use the pit pens. It works like magic, as you guys are all beginning to understand over the slick Mod Podge surface. And to ask um, a common question, I always use matte Mod Podge. The glossy is way too glossy. Um, you can, I, I love it. I actually love the smell of glossy Mod Podge, which is really creepy and weird. But um, I just use the matte. It has just a perfect amount of kind of gloss for my taste. And I'm using my pit pens and to outline everything and a couple people asked what's the difference between the thin pit pens and the br big brush pit pens and the only thing that's different is the size the ink inside is exactly the same so if you can only get your hands on the thin ones uh, don't be sad they'll, they'll work just the same for you just make sure you get the brush nib because a lot of times um, they do come the, especially the black you can get those in very very different nibs and just the brush nib is kind of my fave so that's what I would highly recommend um, so I just use that to, to define any details. I outline her irises and her pupils and her face and anything that needs some delicate outlining I use with the brush. The white, oh my gosh, this, so I've had my pit pens for years. My, br my white is finally starting to actually run out. I can't believe it. I have not had to replace a big, brush pen ever and so I see that one coming to the end of the line which is kind of cool and kind of sad all at once so I just switched to my Posca pen which is equivalent to like a white sharpie water-based sharpie they're all kind of they work the same and I'm just doodling some highlights everywhere um, and throwing some highlights in her hair I'm going back to grab my big punching out well first punching out those highlights in her eyes and grabbing my big brush and really putting some sweeping eyelashes in there she looks kind of like a demented, half-drunk grandmother, really, but who cares? She's fun. It's snowing outside. I'm trapped inside. I had such a blast making her. I'm completely okay with the fact that she's a little creepy and weird because life's too short, you know, not to occasionally make things that are creepy and weird and not having to be perfect and perfectly beautiful just all the time. So just adding some last minute shading to go along with her sparkle and I feel pretty good about her. She was really fun. I love the, the, the analogous color scheme is actually uh, mutes down some of her weirdness and I had a really fun time making her. It took me quite a long time. It was probably about two hours, which is about an hour, about a half an hour longer than I normally do. And I had a great time. If you want more free tutorials, you can join me here on YouTube or at awesomeartschool.com. And I hope you had as much fun watching as I did making. If you have any questions, please just pop them in the comment section. I am so happy to answer any and all questions for you. And don't forget to subscribe. I have free tutorials every single week. Um, and join me on Facebook too on uh, Awesome Art School with Karen Campbell. I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Bye.